Hey guys, I'm back with another video, and yes, we have the Stranger Things candle haul today. I have all four candles that I bought myself, and we'll talk about them and haul them, and we'll get right into it. So yeah, um, there's been obviously much hype and discussion on social media about it. Initially, there was like this false Tuesday launch date because Bath & Body Works teased a Tuesday date, but it was actually just indeed for a teaser video, which was actually already released prior to that Tuesday date, so it's confusing. And then so now it pushed it back to actually the Thursday date, which was what it was initially, and what also was all in the press releases. So here we are Thursday and they have them. Uh, they launched this morning online. I would say the first like one or two hours, it was not available for Boppis, but then after those uh, one or two hours, it was then available for Boppis. And because I knew I had to be at work all day, I was like, let me put in my order for Boppis and do my 20% off and give them for like $16. And that's what I did. Uh, and then so after work, drove to the store, uh, finally got there around like six o'clock. Uh, there's two stores in my region that I went to that are very close to each other. Uh, and both stores still had an abundance of the candles. Not a single soul was looking at Stranger Things. The store was just completely dead. No one was really shopping for any of the Stranger Things stuff. They have this like small little like that box display right when you first walk in and that was fully stocked at both stores. Uh, and then if you further make your way to Cash Wrap, there was actually a whole display at Cash Wrap and still tons of those as well. There were some reports saying that stores only got maybe one or two crates in, which would indicate what, like six to 12 candles. That was certainly not the case at my store. So I don't know if they did a great job of replenishing them or people just weren't buying them to begin with or if they got a lot of inventory. But I, at least in my region and area, had absolutely no reason to be concerned of getting the candles and obtaining them today, that there was no reason for me to have to do Boppis and do the online order ahead of time uh, because both stores at 6 p.m. still had quite, quite a bit of uh, stock or inventory in there. So there was that. Um, as for like the display, it was very minimal. It was just literally just that small little box thing up front um, and not the full blown table that Bridgerton had. Bridgerton had a very extravagant like floor set and display for quite some time. Uh, so it's interesting to see that Stranger Things um, had a much smaller launch. I don't know if that's the result of um, that whole like postponement. I, I, I don't watch Stranger Things or anything on Netflix. So I have no idea or reference or any kind of association to this show. So I can't speak at all from that point of view. But I think I was reading that there was maybe supposed to be a season that was supposed to be launched in this time frame, but it got postponed. And so I don't know if, the, because the timing then was weird that they decided to scale back their launch or whether or not it was a response to the performance of Bridgerton. Because as you know, Bridgerton had a ton of inventory, a ton of hype. They had body care soap, wallflowers, pocket backs, I mean the whole nine yards with it, very large table display and everything. But fast forward to now, even after SAS has concluded, you still see a ton of the Bridgerton stuff for 50% off in abundance with a ton of stock around um, at many of the stores that I go to that has clearly not sold down. So I don't know if it's a response to the performance um, or the lack of performance from the Bridgerton collection. Maybe they just put way more inventory than was actually uh, like demanded for Bridgerton. And so for Stranger Things, they're doing the smaller stripped down launch or because it was the postponement of the season, or if they had just initially always just planned the Stranger Things launch to be smaller than Bridgerton. I really don't know. Pure speculation, but just something to point out and think about. Uh, yeah. And then also, I think there's some, um, it alludes to the fact that this is just chapter one and there might be a chapter two and more products to come out in some other launch. I don't know if that's going to be body care and hand soap and all that kind of stuff, or if it will be another four set of candles. I have no idea, but it does hint at the fact that this is just chapter one and kind of like to look forward to another release later on for other Stranger Things things. So yeah. Uh, and I think that is it. Um... Yeah, okay, so without further ado, let's get into it. Um, yeah, Stranger Things, I guess it has like this, is it supposed to be like a retro 80s vibe, vibe to it? I don't know, it's kind of fun. Um, it kind of looks like what I enjoy about these labels um, and the Bridgerton ones is that the labels kind of look like they belong on the set of the show or the movie or whatever it is, rather than like a souvenir product that um, you would buy as a consumer that's not outside of the show. So I enjoy that these labels kind of like fit into the universe and these could potentially be in the background of the show. And in that way, it feels a little bit more like themed or immersive rather than like a not licensed souvenir product that maybe has like a screenshot of the characters on there or whatever, you know, because you wouldn't see the screenshot of the characters um, on a product in the show because the characters are in the show and they wouldn't be buying their own souvenirs. Do, do you know what I'm saying? So I enjoy that the Bridgerton and the Stranger Things ones kind of like 
have a immersive in-universe or in-environment type of theme to it that like maybe this could be some kind of, I'm assuming Surfer Boy Pizza is some kind of pizza establishment in Stranger Things and like this might possibly look like the menu so like this could potentially be chilling in the background of the set and it's very believable and so I like that sort of like immersive in-setting um, theming and labeling they do on this collection so I appreciate that and like okay maybe the 80s aesthetic is not my favorite I, I, I actually really don't have a preference either way I just like that it feels once again themed and immersive so that's what I appreciate about these labels so in any case yes uh, Argyle's pineapple pizza is the first one right here and that's what that looks like and these are kind of double-sided which is kind of cool because it has like the logo from I'm assuming the show and then it has the Stranger Things logo as well um, and it has the color match lid which I freaking love um, $29.95, baked pizza dough, juicy pineapple, and fresh basil. And what's fun is the bottom warning labels, um, have color on them, which we've gotten the black ones from the aromatherapy collection way back in the day, but I don't think they do that anymore. Um, this one's actually, it looks like it might be white, but it's actually cream colored. So it's different from the usual one that we get. Yeah. So there's like cream and this is white. So... Baked pizza dough, juicy pineapple, and fresh basil. I like it's called Stranger Things, so I'm glad there is one that is actually indeed kind of strange or out of the box and weird. Because I don't know, I, I guess I want that from a Stranger Things collection, right? Like if everything's super basic or mass appeal, it'd be a little boring. Um, so yeah, yeah, sure enough. You get pineapple with that sort of like dry powdery like combos type of feel that you get from like the pizzeria candle where you get almost that kind of like basil, like that powdery fake imitation, the, the combo snack that tastes like pizza where it's that sort of like powdery fake, almost like that like pizza or Italian seasoning type of way, you know, that very powdery dry quality that you would get. Um, in that sort of pizza dough mixed with basil and maybe even like tomato sauce. But what you do get is heaps of that like very distinct like almost like a canned pineapple fragrance up top. And it does indeed smell like pineapple pizza. Um, no, this is not anything I would ever want my house to smell like, but for novelty and like newness, absolutely. So I will try and see uh, how this one goes. Uh, it has like the, the core wicks on it, as you can see right there. As it compares to the actual pizzeria fragrance, which then got repackaged as Rome Pizzeria, as we see right here, that's what that looks like. Fresh garden basil, tomato sauce, and warm crusty pizza dough. So similar kind of notes. Yeah, this one actually goes heavier on that sort of like salty tomato sauce, like tomato sauce paste type of feel. Um, definitely goes stronger on it. Um, it's just like everything about the pizza notes in here just like amp it up like way more. And that's what Rome Pizzeria smells like. Uh, and, and instead this one, they dial down the pizza so they can add in the pineapple to balance it a little bit better. But yeah, it, it kind of smells like pineapple pizza. Actually, it very much smells like pineapple pizza. Uh, very novelty. No, it's not anything that I think I'll ever stock up on. But to get one just for the collection, absolutely. So that was that right there. Moving on, we have the Hopper's Coffee. And it says, mornings are for coffee and contemplation. Uh, and that's what that looks like right there. Um, yeah. Roasted coffee grounds, tonka bean, and splash of half and half. And it's like... Didn't we have a coffee and tonka candle before? It wasn't that like uh, ingredients plus collection, but it only went to test stores with the marble lids on them. But this was back when we had the ingredients list database. And so the ingredients number were still printed on the bottom plus on the database accessible back in the day. Once again, RIP ingredients list number database. Oh my gosh, still so sad. But in any case, uh, because those were um, public back then, we were able to find out that the ingredients list number was the same on Paris Cafe, Campsite Coffee, uh, what is it, the Coffee and Tonka, which is just that usual Paris Cafe fragrance we get all the time, um, as we have right here. And that's what that looks like. So of course you're gonna be like, is this just gonna be Paris Cafe? Um, or Coffee and Tonka, which was indeed Paris Cafe and Campsite Coffee, all the same thing. Uh, but I think freshly brewed coffee is slightly different, but still super similar to Paris Cafe, but a little bit weaker and a little less on that sort of roasty brioche note, but still so incredibly similar. Um, so let's dig into it. This one has white wax and the core wicks on it, and that's what that looks like. I don't know. I think the lighting might wash out the wicks, but there you go. First off, I'm not getting that huge, like, blast of, like, roasty coffee espresso bean note. Like, Paris Cafe, the lid can be closed and hidden in your closet 
and it will still fill the entire closet and like everything in that drawer or closet or enclosed area will smell like Paris Cafe. I'm not getting that when I open this, so there's a difference there. But I feel like this might actually, and I have to burn it, and I really don't know until I burn it, and no, I haven't burned it because I literally just bought it today. Um, I don't know, I think this might actually be, is it very similar? Absolutely, 100%. Like if you're tight on a budget or you just don't care about Stranger Things, do you need to buy this as some new, exclusive, awesome, like the end all be all coffee fragrance? I don't know. If you already have Paris Cafe and Freshly Brewed Coffee, it is very similar. But this does smell a lot more roasty and intense than this one does. Yeah, I don't know, this one actually has a little bit more of a creamy, milkiness to it i think this might actually be a slightly different coffee fragrance and i kind of appreciate that once again i can't reiterate how similar they all are because they're all coffee fragrances but it does smell different i don't know it smells a little bit more like gas station coffee or like sometimes you'll get like a cappuccino or like a pre-made coffee that comes out of like a touch screen button thing and it like comes out with all the the fixings in it and then like you put your you know half and half or maybe it comes pre-added with dairy or milk or creaminess, whatever it is, it kind of gives me that vibe. Yeah, I think this is actually slightly different. There's a creaminess that I really enjoy in here. It could almost be like coffee ice cream in the sense there's a creaminess, uh, but it doesn't have that sort of like, that like very harsh, uh, like aggressive, roasty, uh, just sharpness that Pierce Cafe has that almost has that sort of burnt toasty note. I think it kind of like fixes that. And yeah, I like it. And it's not caramel frappuccino, which is very similar to that cafe latte thing that's out right now, uh, which is also, they're all very similar, white caramel cold brew um, and something else, whipped coffee, right? They, it's that like very caramel milk heavy coffee fragrance where it's so much more emphasis on co the caramel and milk and way less emphasis on the coffee. This has so much more emphasis on coffee and doesn't have that caramel evident caramel like milk note that, it doesn't smell like any of those. Uh, it's closer to Paris Cafe, but I think it's actually slightly different. And I actually really enjoy it. Okay, I'm kind of excited about this one now. So Hopper's Coffee right there. Uh, we'll see how that does, but it seems like the splash of half and half is actually coming through uh, and giving us something a little bit different. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, it smells like coffee ice cream. Oh my God. Okay, uh, Hopper's Coffee right there. Um, Moving on, we have the... Eleven's Waffles. I kind of love how just like in your face yellow and vibrant this is. And what does that say? Friends don't lie. Okay, um, maybe. Um, ooh, and look at the yellow on there. Frozen waffles, maple syrup, and melted butter. Uh, thick rope-like wicks with white wax. Of course, what's, they really kind of like paint them or back themselves into a corner in the sense that all these fragrances immediately outside the pineapple pizza one seem like they could be repackages of the same old fragrances we get all before um and because bath and body works play so much tricks with us in the repackaging we're all kind of like you know being trained to assume something's a repackage but when you smell this this is not pumpkin pecan waffles not at all it doesn't have that like sort of that golden crusty batter fragrance to it and that like heavy nuttiness that you get from the pecan note um it's not present in here this is so much heavier on like, imagine more of like a maple butter fragrance or like a caramel maple butter fragrance. Um, you get a very, very sweet, ooey, um, drippy type of caramel and maple note. And then it's kind of made even more rich by butter. Um, I can't really say I get too much emphasis on an actual crusty bakery waffle note in the way that pumpkin pecan waffles very much has that sort of crusty bakeriness that I really enjoy. Or if you think of like berry waffle cone, you know how there's that very evident brown sugar crustiness. This doesn't really have that like brown sugar crusty, like actual like hard bakery fragrance, more so than just liquid where it's caramel, maple, and butter is what I get from it. Yeah. Is it super new or unique? No. Is it redundant in the sense that we've gotten caramel maple and butter in many other candles? Absolutely. Um, I would say cinnamon caramel swirl, which is also pumpkin caramel swirl or whatever those are called, um, is the closest to this in that type of like ooey gooey, heavy, sweet, like liquidy creaminess, you know? I would kind of categorize it in there. Uh, think of like 
maple cinnamon pancakes, which is also pumpkin caramel latte, and then caramel brulee latte, as well as creme caramel. All those were pretty much the same fragrance that you see here. It is not this. There's like a spice note in this that is, I guess it's the nutmeg. There's a spice note in this. I freaking love this fragrance, by the way. Um, I'm kind of sad that I'm almost done with it. Um, it is not this, but imagine that sort of milky, buttery caramel action that you would find in here. It's like that same fragrance family and category of fragrances for sure, but not the same exact fragrance, but in that realm. Um, and then also we had like things like Mary Maple pancakes. And so of course this is maple and like a pancake note in it. Um, kind of in that once again, very ooey gooey, overly sweet, um, like, you know, sweet tooth, uh, type of maple caramel sweetness. This one by comparison, this one has always sort of fresh berries on it. And there's something sort of bright and fruity and sweet about this that really does come through by comparison when you smell the two side by side, that this one is still different from the Eleven's waffles. But yeah, I think I've said enough. There we go. Um, that's this one. I'm just, I'm just happy that it's not pumpkin pecan waffles. Uh, and lastly, that brings us to the Stranger Things Steve's Scoops candle right here, and that's what that looks like. I love the waves on the bottom, that's kind of fun, and it says ocean of flavor. Scoops ahoy ocean of flavors, whatever that means. Vanilla ice cream, golden waffle cone, and parlor sprinkles, and look at that fun blue warning label on it. Uh, thick rope like wicks, white wax. Hmm, okay, I like this. God, I feel like I've smelled this somewhere before, but I don't know. I would say vanilla extract is what comes to mind first, very much like a vanilla extract fragrance. Or like if you smell like French vanilla ice cream, you know, like French vanilla tends to have that sort of like more rich French vanilla, like that vanilla extract type of moment to it. That's kind of what I get in here. And I like it. Um, yeah, wasn't there, we had that like black single wick collection that had like orange blossom and cypress and amber. And there was a vanilla candle in there. And I thought that vanilla candle had like a mix of both vanilla extract, but then also like a powdery vanilla. It's kind of reminds me of that vanilla extract smell that I got from that candle. It's not the same candle, but I'm just trying to pinpoint that vanilla extract no. Um, yeah, I get vanilla extract in a very like French vanilla ice cream kind of way. Um, it's definitely sweet and creamy and vanilla-ish, but it's like not just your plain old vanilla bean or vanilla bean marshmallow. Those are a little bit more warmer, whereas this one's a little bit more creamy and almost could potentially be like an ice cream coolness to it. So I like that. And then, at first, I was not getting any kind of golden waffle cone, and I was like, oh, that's kind of misleading. But the more I smell it, the more way in the background you get a slight little hint or reminiscence of the brown sugar crustiness of berry waffle cone. Uh, that is actually kind of slightly in here. And I appreciate that. Okay, yeah, but it's still, when you first smell it and before you, like, you really study it, it, you very much just get heaps of this like vanilla extract, French vanilla ice cream note. And then very at the back, you get slight crusty, um, like a waffle cone note to it. Uh, so comparing it to berry waffle cone as we have right here, that's what that looks like. Sweet summer berries, golden waffle cone and creamy vanilla. Yeah, it's like they, it's just like they flip the, flip the, the balances on their head in the sense that this is like crust, crust heavy and then a little bit of vanilla and that sort of baked berry in there. Whereas this, once again, flip it, it's like way heavy on the vanilla, uh, vanilla extract moment and then just way in the back you get a little bit of crustiness. So it's like they, they flip the, you know, the ratio on it. This is so much more immensely crumbly and crusty and golden and baked. And then you get this sort of like this cinnamon spiced berry streusel topping in it. Whereas this does not have all the spices and the berry crumbliness in there. And it's more vanilla extract, vanilla ice cream. But I like it because it does smell like when you smell it, it does remind you of ice cream or walking into an ice cream shop. So I like that. And then since I was talking about an ice cream shop, we did of course have the ice cream shop candle before and that's what that looks like. Decadent almond, gooey toffee, and creamy vanilla bean. What's interesting is the original ice cream shop that came out in the original uh, like American Boardwalk collection, I feel like was a slightly different fragrance from the re-release we got in this collection. And the first version was just this very diluted, watered down, nearly unscented summer boardwalk 
uh, type of fragrance. But this one, they really did the thing with it, and I freaking love this one. I bought, I think I had like three or four of these total. Oh my god, I love this. It is not this. This has more of this, like, for whatever reason, Bath & Body Works' as almonds tend to have, like, this slight perfumey, inedible quality to it. And this has that slightly perfumey, inedible quality to the almond that gave it, like, this weird, strange depth to it. But then you got a little bit more of this, like, nutty, like, sort of waffle cone pieces fragrance with a, like, vanilla creaminess. It's... A similar concept, but it's not the same fragrance at all. Oh god, I freaking love Ice Cream Shop. Oh my god, this is so good. I, I love that. But this, I think, this is a little bit more just obviously like Ice Cream Shop vanilla ice cream creaminess. Think of, there was that creamy, dreamy vanilla fragrance from Homeworks in that ice cream collection back in the day. Uh, very much in line with that. So, yeah. Okay, I like that. Um, on cold... None of them seem like I need to hoard and back up. But as you guys know, I ragged on Danbury Shortbread. And I freaking love that to pieces that I think I like had three of them total. That because when I went into the stores, there was a, a very much abundance of these candles in inventory and stock that I didn't feel like I needed to like, um, like hoard or stock or like, you know, stockpile up front where I could probably just burn these at my leisure. And if there's one that really shines and gets better as it warms up and burns, then if it's still in the store at the time and on sale, then sure, I'll pick it up. But at least on cold, there's none of them are like, just because I've been reviewing and burning candles like so much for so long that I've kind of like encountered everything at this point, that there was nothing right off the bat that seemed like so wow, amazing that I need to get two of, you know, from the get go. So, but we will see once we burn, because things can obviously change and get better as you burn them, just like it did with Danbury Shortbread, which was so freaking amazing and awesome, even though it smelled so incredibly basic on cold. And I think that's pretty much it. I feel like I've been rambling my butt off, but that's what you come here for my channel, right? So it is what it is. So I think that's it. There's a Halloween online only preview tomorrow. I have no idea if it's Boppus activated or if it's just online only, uh, but then I think it's supposed to launch to into stores on the 22nd and I would assume there'll be a candle sale probably the weekend following and you can probably get it then uh but those are all going to be crazy high price points because of like lids so kind of dicey so we'll see how that pans out but I'm probably still going to go to the store at least to smell them so we'll see how that goes um and there's still a little bit more other fall stuff coming I think all like the the next wave of fall has already pretty much been shown on social media. Um, I think there were like rumblings of radium and maple coming back. Um, I want to smell cherry almond shortbread. Um, anything else of interest? I think there's like a pumpkin s'mores thing, but everyone's saying it just smells like chocolate and s'mores and nothing to do with pumpkin or spice spices. So we'll see how that pans out, but I'm interested in that. Um, I think that's pretty much it for the newness that I really even was caring about. So yeah, so we'll go from there. So yeah, thanks so much. Um, hope you enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.